G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It is time for my monthly mock draft. I've been delaying it a little bit because of so many trade rumors swirling, but I'm gonna have another crack. These mock drafts are really hard, I'm not gonna lie. And up to this point, I've been going up to 20, and I think today I'm going to continue with 20. I'm sorry. I have made half assed promises in the past that, you know, as we get closer to the draft, I'll start doing longer ones. I absolutely will. The reason I don't is just because there's so many moving parts with trades going on right now. So I think the first one after, the trade period when picks are somewhat locked in is when I'll start extending it to probably 40. Today I'm going to do the top 20 and I'm going to factor in some of the more concrete, relatively concrete trades that we're going to have so far. So to start off, let's talk about the trades that I'm going to incorporate into this video that will affect the top 20 of the draft. So let's start with Gold Coast trading pick six to Dan Rioli. Again, nothing's locked in, but that's probably the prevailing rumor. I think that deal does happen. Fremantle trade pick nine and a little bit more to Richmond for Shea Bolton. I don't think it'll be nine and 10. It'll be nine and something else, but whatever that other part of the trade is, is not relevant, so it doesn't matter. Hawthorne trade pick 13 and a little bit more to West Coast for Tom Barris. That will affect the top 20 of this draft. Geelong trade pick 16 and more to the Western Bulldogs for Bailey Smith. I got picked up in the last video for suggesting that was a straight swap. Um, let's not get caught too much into that. And then I wanna go through some potential pick swaps that I think make sense. So Brisbane have a father-son and an academy player this year in Levi Ashcroft and Sam Marshall, which means they probably need to add some um, you know, draft points at this stage. So what about pick 15 to Richmond for picks 21 and 29? That gives them a nice boost of points and helps them accumulate some points for, for those um, aforementioned father, son and academy picks. There has been a little bit of noise around a pick swap between North Melbourne and Richmond as well. Again, this is a little bit of speculation. This is not like a really concrete rumor. So just for the fun of it, I've decided to trade North Melbourne's pick two and 22 for Richmond for pick six and 15. I think the logic of this is around the idea that North Melbourne probably don't need to pick from the top handful of midfielders this year. If they can trade down the order a little bit, it gives them some better access to some tools. On the other hand, Richmond probably needs some tools as well. But let's roll with that for a little bit. And then I'll also incorporate St Kilda getting banned one compensation for Josh Battle, which is not locked in yet, but it's probably more likely than not. So those are conservatively the trades I'm gonna do. A couple of trades I'm not gonna do. Liam Baker to West Coast, there has been some noise that it might cost West Coast pick three and they'll get Baker in nine back. I mean, if that was coming from anyone other than John Ralph, I'd incorporate that. I'm not sure exactly what happens there, to be honest. And I, I just don't think it's likely enough to happen in that specific way to work into this video. I feel like there's gonna be a lot to play out there. Similarly with Dan Houston. Dan Houston could end up leaving Port Adelaide. And if I had to guess, I probably would guess, not that my guess is worth much, that he ends up at Carlton. But Carlton apparently, according to Riley Beveridge, really don't want to give up their first pick in this year's draft. So to be honest, I don't know how they make that deal work if they don't. So let's just park that for one minute. You could, in theory, just switch Carlton's pick for Port Adelaide, but I'm just gonna leave it out for the time being. So without further ado, we're gonna crack into our top 20 selections. Before we go any further, I just wanna let you guys know that this video has brought you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. There are a multitude of benefits to accessing something like therapy. First of all, it provides a great safe space to talk. You can share whatever is on your mind, whether it's stress or sadness, and you can have that without the fear of any judgment. And there's nothing wrong with having these conversations with friends or loved ones, but through therapy, you'd actually get guided advice from an expert. That is a trained mental health expert who is there to listen, ask questions, and help you see new perspectives. And one thing that I suspect people do is that they wait until the problems in their life reach such a level or a threshold that they feel like they then need to get therapy to fix it, whereas perhaps you could think about therapy as a source of personal growth. You don't necessarily need to have a clinical mental health issue such as depression, or anxiety before you can seek out therapy. So as I said, BetterHelp is the paid partner of this video and they're on a mission to make starting therapy easier. And getting started with BetterHelp is really easy. All you need to do is go to the link in this description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. From there, you fill out a questionnaire and in most cases, you'll get matched within a couple of days. And one of the best features about BetterHelp is that if you feel like the therapist you get isn't quite the right fit, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. If you're someone who is struggling and think you could benefit from a therapy session, go to betterhelp.com forward slash truefooty or visit the link in the description to get started. Clicking the link does support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. So we've muddled up the order a little bit and Richmond, having traded with North Melbourne, will hold the first two selections in this year's draft. There is a little bit of talk that they want to hold as many uh, picks at that top end to be able to, to group some players together. So in this scenario, 
they were picks one and pick two. I think they'll group a couple of midfielders together. I've got a pretty good idea who one of them's going to be based on opinion. Picking the second one's a little bit harder. Let's start with Jagger Smith. Now, again, certainly not locked in to be a number one prospect, but I think unlike a lot of the other top prospects in this year's draft, Jagger has just remained consistently consistent. And I think the other day they said he had a quiet game because he had like 24 and a goal. He's been racking up possession counts of in the 40s and 50s consistently. He's gone up to high levels and played well as a midfielder despite being, you know, the smallest bloke on the field. I think there is a real degree of certainty and security with a Jagger Smith selection. And if Richmond have two here, I think they'll take Jagger Smith and be a little bit potentially more speculative with the second pick. Now, figuring out who that second selection, that second midfielder, is going to be is tough from the outside looking in. So I actually decided on Harvey Langford for this selection. And then I realized right before I started recording this, Toomey's come out and put Langford at second. So I promise you, I, I did that myself. The reason being, who are some of the other candidates here? I did consider Sam Lawler. There's Sid Draper, again, a probably evenly rated talent, but do Richmond select the Victorian kid if they're ev evenly rated? Probably. Murphy Reed probably hasn't really elevated himself to being quite that high. And Finn O'Sullivan, his form has dropped off this year to some extent. I, I think he's going to slide a little bit at this current point in time. And same thing with Josh Smiley again, probably falling away a little bit. Langford's stocks have only increased since he won joint Lark medalist at the championship. So I'm going to combine Smith and Langford, who have both played for Richmond's VFL team, as being two very different midfielders that join Richmond together. West Coast hold pick three in this scenario, and this is probably where I'll just bid on a Levi Ashcroft for the Brisbane Lions. Again, it's it's kind of all academic where he actually gets bid on, so let's just say it happens here. Um, you know, Will Ashcroft at the moment, as I'm recording this, is the kind of the talk of the town with an amazing performance in the finals. If Brisbane can add a second one to go with, you know, obviously Will and Jasper Fletcher and potentially Sam Marshall in this draft as well, geez, their future's looking good. So. Levi Ashcroft is similar to Will somewhat as a high volume, high possession, consistent midfielder. They'll, they'll absolutely snap him up here. So that puts West Coast back on the board. And this one is still, again, tricky. I think their needs are going to be certainly midfield, which makes sense for this selection. And there's a few evenly rated ones. So previously, I think the last two I've gone Sid Draper for West Coast. And I think, you know, I still think that's the logical choice, but let's just mix it up a little bit and go for an evenly rated talent in Sam Lawler. Now, Sam is a midfielder forward who can absolutely win his own ball in a contested sense. Good tackling, defensively minded midfielder, but can float forward and take a screamer. The only argument against Lawler is kind of similar to a couple of types West Coast already have in Harley Reid and Elijah Hewitt in their existing midfield. So I could see them going Draper, but let's go with Lawler. I think on talent, that would be the other choice at this current point in time with Langford off the board. Adelaide snap up Sid Draper. I do think Toomey is underrating Draper a little bit, putting him at eight in his phantom form guard. I think Draper is one of the more safe bet midfielders in this draft up there with Jagger. And again, similar to Jagger, has proven himself playing up a level, playing in the sand for winning heaps of the footy. I kind of want him to go to West Coast, but let's say Adelaide take their local boy here. So the Melbourne Football Club are on the board here. In my last draft, I had them taking the same player, except their pick has improved and I think his draft position has improved. I've got him taking Murphy Reed. Now, there are some other players here still on the board. You'll probably bear in mind that Finn O'Sullivan, Josh Smiley are both on the board, but I like Murphy Reed probably as well as much as anything, I think. There is a ready-madeness to, to the way he's playing, and he's certainly able to win his ball on the outside. He can set up play with good foot skills. He can go forward. He's kept multiple bags of three whilst playing as a midfielder as well. I just like this selection for Melbourne to offset a little bit of what they've already got, and as a midfielder, can come in, and play on the outside and support Petrarca and Oliver and Viney. Probably more so than, say, you know, a smiley could come in and impact from day one. I actually think Murphy Reed, being an outside player that does not rely on a contested game, I feel like he actually will come in and impact earlier. And I think that will appeal to the Ds here. I did seriously consider going a tall forward here. So North Melbourne have traded down in this scenario, and this is where Richmond would come in. Well, technically, it's Gold Coast pick. It has now found its way to North Melbourne, and I think they'll use this selection to go tall. I really considered Harry Armstrong for Melbourne. I changed it. I think North Melbourne snap him up here. They do need a young key forward. There are a few good key forwards around this range. I also considered Luke Trainer as a defender. But having taken um, Will Dawson in last year's draft, maybe they prioritize a key forward here. And I think Harry Armstrong is the best available. So North Melbourne get their man after trading down. If Melbourne did go Harry Armstrong, then I expect North Melbourne maybe go Trainer here. 
So now we've got St Kilda with back-to-back -back picks because of the Josh Battle selection. This is where I think Finn O'Sullivan might slide to. Now, I could be wrong on this. Toomey still ranks him at number four, but I feel like Finn's uh, a top age year, so the year he turns 18 this year, he hasn't really got going and his possession counts haven't been super high. I do think he's super talented and absolutely worth it, but I just think someone like a Murphy Reed, Draper, Lawler even, to some extent with their performances this year, may just sneak ahead of Finn O'Sullivan. We're talking about very evenly rated prospects here, so I could be wrong on this. It's not something I feel strongly about, but I think I'm going to go with recency bias and drop Finn, Finn O'Sullivan down. But I do think it's a great selection for St Kilda. I think he's got the tools to play as a running half back, maybe to start his career, and then move into the midfield a little bit later. With their other selection, having lost Josh Battle, I think Luke Trainer probably does make sense for St Kilda here as a Ridley-esque defender who can intercept and set up play with his foot skills. I think he would complement Finn O'Sullivan really well. I don't think they need to go two midfielders and Trainer is probably there on talent in my opinion. So this is where Essen is licking the lips and selecting a guy who was considered a pick one contender or a pick one favorite at the start of this season in Josh Smiley. Smiley has slid a little bit. It's actually unclear a little bit why he seems to have slid in calculations. I think Toomey had him at seven. I can't remember where ESPN had him, but generally speaking, there has been this a little bit of a, a move away from Smiley as a being a top pick contender. For me, for me, I think you just factor in as well. I don't think St Kilda go two midfielders with their selections. I could be wrong. I think North Melbourne will trade down to go for a tall. So these little things, the teams that actually have selections in this range, will decide where players go and will influence where the players drop. So I think Smiley slides a little bit. St Kilda could go Smiley instead of O'Sullivan. I just thought O'Sullivan probably probably would be who I'd pick. So Essendon going to get that big body of midfielder after spending a first rounder on Nate Caddy last year. I think they can afford to go midfield and he certainly adds something different to what they've got. So now we've got Richmond who traded down. In fact, no, sorry, they traded this selection. Well, they got it from Fremantle for Shea Bolton. Now we've got Jagger Smith and Harvey Langford joining them and I think where Richmond's at they could go midfield or they could go a tall and I think a tall forward might be on the card so maybe they bolt a little bit on Job Shanahan now, there's a few options there's Jonty Four um, and, and the Whitlock twins that they could pick but Shanahan I think has really impressed in recent times with his performances at VFL level and I do think a key forward is necessary for Richmond here I think they might spend a little bit of an earlier pick than expected on a Job Shanahan. Again, speaking to this idea that depending on who's got picks in certain range and their particular needs, that will influence the draft order. It's not necessarily a ranking of talent. So I like that selection for Richmond. They add Jagger Smith, Harvey Langford, and then they add a key forward in Job Shanahan. And I think with later picks, they will still continue to look at tolls later in the draft, but they've made a really good start. This is probably where I have Fremantle bidding on Leonardo Lombard. Again, he slid a little bit in terms of where he's gonna go. It is all academic at this point. I actually think if he was in the open pool, he would probably be going in that top eight, to be honest, but these academy talents do tend to slide for whatever reason. So Fremantle's looking at it going, nope, Gold Coast, you can't have any more of a bargain. Gold Coast will add Leonardo Lombard through their academy. I think he's an absolute gun, smaller midfielder forward. I could see him performing well early at AFL level because he was doing it in the VFL at about 16. So we got Fremantle with their first live selection here. Now Fremantle do have another selection in the top 20 here. There is probably a few options they could go. What do they really need is hard to assess. They haven't been in the draft for a couple of years now, or at least not early. I think they're pretty sweet for tolls, to be honest. You know, their key backs, they added one last year. They've got quite a few on the list. The key forwards with Amos, uh, Tracy, and Jackson, I mean, do they really need to spend their first pick on a key forward? There's a few going, I'd say probably not. So in a draft that is full of evenly rated talents, do they go midfield and do they go local? Could they go a little bit early on Bo Allen? That's who I have. Bearing in mind, West Coast is picking two picks later. Bo Allen is a 191 centimeter, sort of midfielder utility type. He's a pretty good athlete. He's pretty um, well built and contested. And we're probably a couple of years removed from Fremantle really spending a decent pick on a midfielder. So I do consider Xavier Lindsay, there's Trevalia. Um, you know, I think Bo Allen is different enough to someone like a Cooper Stevens who they drafted last year in terms of skill set, local boy, leadership potential. I think Fremantle will go Bo Allen at this selection. So that leaves Carlton next. And Carlton may or may not hold this pick depending on what happens with Dan Houston. But we know that Carlton really wants a pick in this range. So what do they need? Probably just best available. I think they've dra traded out of early parts of drafts in recent times. We know they've got a great spine. I considered going a key back here, but in the absence of real confidence about which direction they'd go, 
I'm gonna go best available and say Toby Trevalia. Trevalia probably could easily go earlier than this. Again, what I have dictating the order a lot is teams needs and, and you know, say Richmond and North Melbourne deciding to go tall here. St Kilda picking a, a, a tall that they might not if they only had one pick. Fremantle also deciding to go local in a draft with evenly rated talents. Trevalia has slid a little bit to 14 and I think Hart will snap him up here as a running defender with potential to play wing and midfield, good ball use, Good speed. I think this would be a bargain for Carlton, to be honest. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, even Fremantle were taken with the selection before. So we got West Coast picking with the Tom Barris pick. And I think, well, their needs are still midfield. And they probably would go Bo Allen, realistically, in this range, considering the evenness of the pool. But he's not there. So I think maybe do they go tall with this selection? I think a key back is absolutely something West Coast need. And this is where I got him taking Alexander Toru, an intercepting defender out of the country. He's 193 centimeters. You'd imagine he grows a little bit. With McGovern right at the end of his career, Tommy Barris finding a new club. West Coast are going to be potentially exposed for key backs in the not too distant future. And, you know, he's stylistically different enough from Harry Edwards where they could form a combo. So I like that for West Coast. GWS are a very hard team to uh, forecast who they're going to select because they pretty much select from their own board. I say this every video as a bit of a precursor to not knowing who they're going to pick. In terms of needs, they could go a tall forward, maybe. I mean, the Jesse Hogan's going pretty well. He's 29. I still think a midfielder with a bit of run and carry could be on the cards for him, particularly if Isaac Cumming and Perryman leave. A bit of outside class. That probably leaves Xavier Lindsay from Vic Country, 183 centimeter. One of my favorite prospects actually to watch in this year's draft and someone I'm kind of hoping gets the West Coast. But realistically, he's still on the board and I've got GWS snapping him up here. So that leaves North Melbourne with their second selection as a result of the pick split with the Richmond Football Club. So they've taken a key forward and obviously trainers not on the board yet. I don't know, in the next glut of tolls, a lot of them are forward leaning. They're not necessarily key back. So they necessarily need to go for a key back here. Can they wait later in the draft? I'll, I'll probably go best available here. I feel like North have a lot of medium forwards on their list. That's probably not an area they need, but do they have a genuine small, like a Joe Berry? I think Joe Berry goes here as a best available selection. Very hardworking, modern day small forward who can impact the scoreboard, is busy with his pressure, but also pushes high up the ground to win possession and deliver the ball inside 52. So I think from a skill set point of view, he does add something North don't have, and he's pretty much there on best available talent. The Bulldogs select here with the Bailey Smith selection at pick 18, and this guy probably would go earlier had he not done an ACL. I'm going to say Taj Hotton goes here. He could have gone earlier on talent, like I said, done an ACL. And also probably, dare I say, there's a bit of a suggestion wants to stay in Victoria. So all of these little factors come into it for me. If that is true, GWS are not going to pick him. West Coast probably not going to pick him. Same with Fremantle, but on talent, probably right there. Hardworking, smaller forward. He's 182 centimeters who showed an ability to win possession in the midfield this year. I think the Bulldogs obviously going through a bit of a shuffle around with their midfield. Bailey Smith's leaving, Jack McRae's leaving, Liberatore, and of course, you know, Bont. So they're not exactly getting any younger. I think they can look to midfield here considering the depth of tools they've got at the Bulldogs. So it's the best available scenario here, outside classy player. I really like this selection for the Bulldogs here. I think they've, they've gotten lucky if he's still there at pick 18. Fremantle then select here, but I'm gonna bid on Isaac Carco. This might be a bit of a bargain here for Essendon. As an academy player, they can match. So they'll absolutely match him here. 175 centimeter, small forward. Again, good pressure, gets a lot of shots on goal. Probably add something that Essendon lack. They'll have no doubts about adding him to Josh Smiley. So this has been a great draft for Essendon. And finally, at pick 20, I've got Fremantle holding this pick. Again, I don't know if they're going to hold this. I did see on Gettable this morning that they might look to trade this into the future, which as an aside made me think, well, if they're doing that, do they really think they can get Chad Warner in 12 months? Maybe. I can't see any other reason why you would trade a pick in a strong draft into a weaker draft into the future. It must be for a target. Just a theory, but I think there's logic to that. So Fremantle select here. They've already taken Bo Allen. Like I said, I don't think they need to go tall. This is probably a best available scenario. They've picked a midfielder. Do they go another one who is quite different in Cooper Hines? Well, maybe he's not that different to Bo Allen, but taller, explosive sort of athlete, big bodied, you know, Fife's probably not too far off the end. When you look at Fremantle's midfield, it's damn good. Hayden Young, Caleb Sarong, Andy Brayshaw, but a huge, big, powerfully built midfielder. Cooper Hines probably adds something a little bit different. And, and so does Bo Allen. So are they doubling up a little bit on big bodied mids? Tough one. I'd like some input from Fremantle fans, but from a best available scenario, and I think attributes and style, this makes sense for Fremantle. I don't think they need to go tall here. So there you have it, guys. That was a, is a bit of an out there mock draft. I mean, I could just rank the 
players and teams in order would be a bit pointless. I've tried to go needs-based as best as possible. I've thrown a little bit of opinion in there. You know, for instance, Finn O'Sullivan may or may not slide that far. Same thing with Smiley. I realize those are gonna cop a little bit of heat and, and scrutiny, but that's fine. As always, I look forward to your input and I look forward to doing this after the trade period again for you once we have a little bit more idea about where the selection's gonna fall. But for now, I thank you for watching. I thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.